Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is Ryan Knows Tech from techinform.us. We're going to kick off this short week. I will mention that uh, this week is going to be an abbreviated schedule. Since Christmas is at the end of the week on Saturday, I'm going to take Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday off to get some stuff done around the house, catch up on a lot of things, and definitely work on our site and some things that are be going to be going on in the next few weeks. I hope that's not a problem for anybody, but again, uh, there will be videos Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then next week, um, probably Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, depending on what happens. Who knows? You may some you may see something two days after Christmas. I don't know, but I'm not going to hold myself accountable for that. I'm going to take some time off. Happy holidays. Anyhow, today's video is about Photoshop. Early Photoshop users, beginners that really don't know how to do a whole lot, which is fine because I was there just about a year ago. I just got Photoshop in November to December of 2009. So we're going to take a look at it today, open it up, and see what's going on. Now this is the Mac version, it's CS5 Extended Legal Edition, so it should be the same as your CS5 Extended. CS4 will be completely backwards compatible. There's very few things that CS5 has, and CS4 doesn't, at least practical things that we'll be talking about. CS3, it's essentially the same as CS3 in the basics that we'll be talking about today. CS2, I don't know, I've never used it. So the first thing we need to do is clear our Photoshop setting file. If you are a veteran Photoshop user, you probably don't want to do this. However, it is not going to screw you over if you know how to set back up what you need to. But I, I, uh, I say that we need to do this because there are so many different Photoshop settings that if I'm trying to show you how to do something, you may do it on your settings and it may turn out completely differently or not work at all. So to do this on a Mac, you hold down your Command, Option, and Shift key at the same time while holding them down constantly, launch Photoshop. You're gonna see this, delete the Adobe Photoshop settings file. Click yes. This is just going to eliminate all of the settings for what tools you have open and the settings for those tools. And you may find in a couple of instances that, darn it, why isn't this working? Think for a second, look back up top, look at your settings. It's probably just default. On a PC, I believe that would be, I don't know, let's take a look at my PC keyboard here. Uh, that would be Alt Control Shift, I believe. Or it might be a Flag Control Shift. Try both of those. So we'll click yes. It's just going to take a second to delete that one file that stores our setting information. And here's what we have. This is basic default Photoshop. And you can't do a whole lot in Photoshop without opening or creating a document. In this video, we're going to make a new document. To open a document, well, it's pretty straightforward. You come up here, File, Open, or Command O, or Control O on a PC. So we'll just do Command N for a new document. And here it is. Let's give it a name, test document, and a size. We can choose our size in pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points. I don't know what that means. Or columns. I don't PCAS. I have no idea. So I usually do this in pixels. And to create a graphic for tech and form, we use 500 by 300 images. And I would do something like that, but it's a little small. So we'll just do 8 by 10 inches uh, for this video. So 8 by 10. This is your resolution. I recommend 150 for your resolution, that's pixels per inch, that's just gonna be a higher quality color, higher quality image. Color mode, you probably want RGB, which is red, green, and blue, meaning that it's in color. You may just want grayscale and black and white, it's up to you. We're gonna do color, 8-bit is pretty standard, you get into 16 and 32. The file sizes are massive, and uh, you may have some compatibility issues. Notice when we go from 8 to 32, it goes from 5 meg to 20, so we'll just keep it at 8. Click on OK, it's going to take a second, and here's your new document. Now notice it's scaled at 50%. The more Photoshop windows you open, they show up just like this. You can move them around within your workspace. For example, if we create another document that is 4 by 5, here it is, and now it's in a tab. We can drag that out of the tab, and here it is at 100%. If we were to scale both to 100%, well, the one on the left, the larger image, would be exactly twice the size. But we don't need that image, so we'll just close it. So here's our new image. Now on the left, as TweetDeck takes over my screen, on the left, these are all of our tools. All of these tools do something differently. And I don't know what every single one of them does. I've probably only used 75% of the ones that are available. Some tools have a little black arrow in the bottom right hand corner of them. If you click and hold down, you'll then see more tools that are hidden beneath that one. And this is one of the reason, re, one of the reasons, can't talk today, we reset our settings file. Because if we're looking for the paint bucket tool, it's hidden under the gradient. So we have to hold down gradient and come over and click on paint bucket tool to go back to gradient, hold it down, and then go back, um, 
back to gradient. Or you can right click instead of holding it down, it's up to you. Down at the bottom, tools keep going, tools keep going. Then there's these two little buttons. And those two little buttons affect what's going on here in your foreground and background colors. Taking a look at the colors thing here, it's pretty cool. This is our foreground color. We essentially can use this bar to decide what type of color we want. Red, green, yellow, blue. Let's go with a red. And then we can drag around in this palette to adjust how much red into the black, into the gray, into the white, how red or pink we want it to be. If we want Ferrari red, I happen to know that Rosa Corsa red, the hex key for that is D40000. Every color has a six digit number. Two digits specify a red value, a green, uh, green value, and a blue value. So I don't know what order they're in, but D4 Quattro Zero would be Ferrari color. Uh, we can also click on only web colors, and that's going to show us um, colors that are pretty much universally recognized by all browsers, which might be nice for web design. We can also come in here and edit all of this. I don't recommend it. Just get the hex key number or eyeball it and decide what you want. Not that it matters, but we're going to do that Ferrari color. Okay, so there's our foreground color. Click on the back one. That's going to be our background color. Maybe we want uh, a deep blue, How about something like that. Click on OK, and there it is. Now, uh, these two little buttons I talked about, one of them looks like a double-sided arrow. Click that, it's going to switch your foreground and background. That might be useful if you're doing gradients, dropping paint all over the place with your paint bucket tool, stuff like that. And then this other button is going to default it to straight black, four zeros, and straight white, four Fs. Those are the, or six Fs, sorry, six zeros, six Fs. That's going to be your hex, meaning six, uh, code for the color. Kind of just a little hot key to get back little hidden tool, I guess, kind of hidden, in the zoom tool here. I would like to say that no matter what tool you choose, this bar along the top offers the settings for that tool. Like your feather value, that's just kind of how it blends in. That's a healing brush, that little picture of a band-aid and a marquee around it. Maybe we want to do content aware, which is, I believe, only in CS5. Proximity match and create texture. We can adjust that. Look at our mode here. If you're ever having a problem, make sure that your mode is normal. Because a lot of times, I know um, when you double click a layer, it'll come up in that display properties, whatever that is, your mode will be something else other than normal, and then it doesn't look the way it's supposed to. So let's just play around, go over here to our paint bucket tool, black is our foreground color, and click. We have now made a layer. Actually, the layer was there, but we've now put something in it we can see. With Photoshop, every different graphic you use, every color, Pretty much anything you add to a photograph is in its own layer. That makes it very easy to move around certain things. Maybe if you were making a, um, a desk, like a desktop for a tech guy, I don't know if why, you were do why you'd be doing that, but then you could drag around a monitor and a mouse and put effects on certain layers and delete them and add them as you wish. Notice there's a lock over here to the right in that layer, and it says background in italics. When it's in italics, that means the layer's locked, so you can't move it around and otherwise screw it up. Double click the lock, it's now going to unlock the layer. Give it a name, we'll call this background. Our color is none, meaning it'll be set to whatever we make it. Our mode is normal, make sure that's true. And opacity, that's how transparent something is. 100% opaque would mean nothing's going to get through it. If you change that down to 50, then only half of that color is being displayed and whatever under it is also uh, taking up half of it. So we'll make it 100% opaque and there's our background layer. We'll make a new layer. There's all these buttons down at the bottom of our layers window here. Starting, that is a link key, or a little link thing there. You can link two layers together temporarily to move them around and apply the same effects and keep them together. That might be useful for more experienced users. FX here, I really don't know. Oh, um, actually that would be kind of a shortcut to get to this. When you double click on that, you get all of these options, which we'll take a look at in a second. This is a very advanced program, it honestly is, and it takes a lot to learn how to use it. But um, once you get it, it's really quite simple. This next one over here is going to create a layer mask. We'll be talking about that in a minute as well. This one here, I don't believe I've ever used this. That kind of looks like the, um, I think, layer or filter up here. I don't know, you might find a use for it. If you want to make a folder, this is great for, or, for organization. You can make a new group, name your group. If we were doing that desk, we could make it electronics and then drag all of our layers of an iPad, maybe an iPhone, a MacBook Pro, whatever we had on our desk into that, into that uh, folder so we could 
turn on and off that. Speaking of turning on and off, you see these little eyeballs next to each layer. That's going to display and hide each layer when you click on it. So maybe you wanted to see what something looked like without a certain layer, without deleting it. And if you did ever delete it with your delete key, which we'll do with that group, a simple command or control Z will bring that back, which is nice. We'll just get rid of that for now. Over here next to the trash can, the trash can is obviously going to be delete, is a, it kind of looks like a pad of paper with one end lifted up. That's the symbol for create a new layer. So here's a new layer, it called it layer one. Let's open a file, command O. We'll come over to wallpapers here, scenery, and we will drag in this image I did in my last Photoshop tutorial, which is a lovely photograph from Venice Beach. Now notice this opened in a new tab here. It's going to tell me that it's so it's showing 66.7%. It's um, in color and it's 8-bit. So we'll just unlock that layer and drag it up here to the other tab of my, my test document and drop it. The whole thing doesn't fit. It's too big. We need to scale it down. Make sure that you're on the right layer when you're trying to affect something. If you come over to background and you try to scale it, it isn't going to work. So go up to layer 2. That's what we just dragged in. And we're going to scale it. So that's command or control T on your keyboard. There it is. Now you have these transform controls around here and you can drag them around. Well, this is absolutely rubbish. You're losing your aspect ratio, right? So let's say you accidentally did that. You don't want that, right? Up in the top, right up here you have a no smoking sign and a check mark if you click the check mark it's gonna stay like that don't do it you don't want it so click this no smoking sign and now it's back to normal do that again command T now hold down the shift key on your keyboard and drag that down it now keeps its aspect ratio lift up the shift key after you have released the mouse and drag the image where you want it let's say we want to put that up here when you're done click on the check mark up there so there's our new layer Let's double click on that layer and take a look at some of the effects in here. Drop shadow. Well, the background is black right now, so we can't really see a drop shadow. Let's cancel that and change our background color by coming over to the background, switching our black and white, going to paint bucket and click. Now our background is white. Go back up to layer two, double click it, drop shadow. Very slightly, you can see our drop shadow. Now each of these, you can check and uncheck them. When you click on them, you get all of these different settings for a drop shadow. So let's make it bigger in terms of pixels. It's now 117 pixels. Our spread is a little bit bigger. And distance, that's going to control how far away from the object it is. We'll put it out here. And then opacity, bring it up to 100%. Down, you can adjust how strong it is. So there's 75%. We'll turn that off so you can see the other effects. An inner shadow is going to put a shadow over here. And I should mention, we'll go back to drop shadow. You can see it easier that uh, you have an angle here. It's at 120 degrees. You can just kind of drag this thing around and as you can see that adjusts where the offset is, which is nice. We'll turn that back off. You can do the same thing with inner shadow as well. We'll just leave it at about 141, 40, 40 degrees. Adjust our size. I, I'm not a big fan of inner, inner shadows and outer shadows mixed. As you can see, it just kind of looks like it's been burnt or something, but it's up to you and your design. And of course, it depends what you're doing. So we'll turn that off. Outer glow, I mean, the best way to do this is just play with it. I don't need to go through all of these, but I think I will. Now, uh, let's do an outer glow of, uh, I don't know, how about, this is kind of cool. Let's say you want to change the color of that sky. Instead of trying to guess what kind of blue it is, come over here when you have this color picker window open and click somewhere in the sky. And it'll take that exact number, which was 74849D was the color over there. Maybe we want this color. As you can see, it's a little different and it'll jump around. So there's 566C83. Click on OK. So now we have an outer glow of that. But wait, you don't see it. Look at this. Blend mode is screen. You don't want screen. You want normal. That's a stupid setting. So now it's normal. We'll drag up that size so it should show up. And there's our outer glow. And that's going to come around the whole outside of whatever layer you're working with, which is nice. You can then you can adjust your noise, opacity, and everything else. Inner glow, pretty self-explanatory. Bevel and emboss is cool, but not really with photos. It kind of gives it a 3D, uh, almost like a template effect, as well as contour and texture. Satin is something I never use. It really just seems to make it darker, and it's not really for photographs. It's for solid color objects. Color overlay. If you want to go over the whole image with a certain color, which you rarely do, but maybe you wanted to make the whole thing pink. 
I don't know why you'd want to do that. That's stupid. But now you've made the whole entire image pink. You can obviously adjust that opacity, and that looks kind of cool. You can adjust how much pink you just put on there. Let's click cancel because that looks stupid. You can also overlay a gradient. A gradient is the diffusion from one color to another color. So if we want to go from, let's see what color. We'll click on the uh, gradient here where you see your probably default black to white. Click on that. There's a whole bunch of other themes over here. Actually the white to um, nothing looks kinda cool. And maybe adjust that opacity. That's kinda cool. But we can come back, back in on that. Maybe make our own gradient. Click this swatch on the top left of the um, the graph over here. Actually go back to black and white and we'll adjust that. So click on the actually the one on the bottom and adjust a color. Let's say we want to go red to blue, which would look absolutely awful, but it is easy to see. And there we are, red to blue with limited opacity. If we want to put more colors in there, just click. Now we put more colors in there, more blue. We can adjust how far they are apart. Again, the best way to do this is just play with it. And if something bad goes wrong, if something bad happens, just control Z. If you want to go back more than one step, then you have to do command or control option uh, Z which will go back more than one step. But we'll click cancel because that now looks awful. Turn off our gradient overlay and we're good. Pattern overlay. Let's say you want to overlay a pattern over the whole image and uh, maybe drag our opacity down, give it some sort of a texture. Come over here to pattern. There's two included, both of which are pretty stupid. And then we can adjust our scale, how big or small it is. Again, most of these things you're never going to use, but they are kind of cool. A stroke, something used a lot in graphic design. A stroke is like a big black or whatever color you want picture frame around the whole thing. So we'll come over to stroke. We'll change our color to, how about the color of that sunset? OK. And size. Make it a little bit uh, about like that, maybe. Position is, how about center? So we'll go right down the middle of the outside edge of the picture. picture. Adjust our opacity. Probably not for this photo, but could be a nice effect. So those are all the settings in there. What else should we go over in this review? <laughs> Let's go back to our background. Switch our colors. Let's make it black. And I'll, I think I've made a video about this before, but it's kind of interesting, and it's a good way to show you what a um, layer mask does. So we'll paint our background black. There it is. And on our layer 2, click the um, this thing. It kind of looks like a layer. Oh, it's a layer mask. Click on that. And then we'll go over to our gradient tool. Black to white. Hold shift and kind of drag up like that. And it's going to make a gradient on it that kind of just disappears the whole thing in there. Now, the main purpose for this would be the reflection, and you can easily make a reflection of this image. So we can duplicate that layer. Duplicate layer 2 by right hand click, duplicate layer, save it as layer 2 copy, that's alright. And then there it is. Notice if we wanted to, we can move that around as such, but we don't want to. We want to make a, a reflection like Apple does all the time. So with, with the copy layer selected, go up to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertically. And here it is. So now drag that down to the bottom. Well, that's hard to see the bottom, isn't it? So how about we put it like, see, we can turn off our background, and then we can see where the bottom is exactly. Turn back on our background. Put a layer mask on your copy. Go to your gradient tool, and with the shift key down to keep that line straight, drag up the bottom several times till you get it where you want. So now it looks like it's sitting on glass as I knock over stuff on my desk. And you can see that it actually looks really cool. So that's pretty neat. If we were trying to uh, turn this in for some project, I would definitely come back over to layer two and put an outer glow of probably not a gradient, solid color of white, blend mode, normal, and make that a little bit bigger and not as strong. So that kind of looks pretty cool. Probably leave it like that. With the reflection, text is done easily by clicking the T down here. And go back to your background layer, because we'll want to be editing that. And it's going to create a new text layer. Here it is. Type. Obviously, my font is in black, so you can't read it. So we're going to have to select all of it. Control A. Go over to our foreground color. Let's make our font the color of that blue. Click on that. And there's our blue font. It's a little small, so we'll come up here to the top where all the options are for our tools and change it from size 12 to, how about, 48. 
Eh, that's all right. And then we can move it around. I'll change what it says for the ease of this video. Text example. Use our move tool, which is that uh, cursor and then a compass near it, and move it over here. Double click it for more options. How about a drop shadow on it? Well, let's make our drop shadow, how about, how about, um, nah, black background, you're not going to see it. Now the bevel and emboss, as I click that, you see it, it goes from a flat layer to like a 3D layer. That's kind of cool. We'll leave it like that. Uh, another thing that I've done with text, I've done uh, an outer glow, maybe of the color of the sky in that photo again. Bring the opacity down, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, blend mode normal. See, that even trips me up still. Opacity back up. Yeah, but you can put an outer glow on that, which would definitely look nice if I got it to work there. But so many options and so many things to go over in Photoshop. This video is probably way too long right now. Yeah, we're at 20 minutes. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, if any of you stayed, I can't believe it. Thank you. Um, but up here, you've got um, marquee tools, which you can use to select, which is uh, actually quite nice. Make sure you're selecting on the right layer, though. So come over here to this layer, select. You can now use the move tool to move your selection around, um, or the whole image, because it cut it. And then Control z and Command d to go back. So Photoshop, a really great advanced tool. There's a lot of tools over here I haven't even touched. If you have any requests for um, future how-to videos in Photoshop, then leave a comment, send me an email, ryan at techinform.us. We'll talk about it, and I'll try to get a video up this week. But over here, we have blur, sharpen, and smudge tools, which is really great if you're trying to edit stuff together. You have a, a, um, a rubber stamper tool, which is great if you're trying to edit stuff out of a photo, like... Um, I don't know, a big blemish and a paint job of a car, a dead bug in a car, rust spot in a car you want to edit out. That's a great tool for that. Lasso tool. Lots of really, really, really great tools here. I can't stress that a lot. I love Photoshop. And then the save your work file, save as. I usually do a save as. Always save a Photoshop document. It's a .psd file. Always save that. After that, you can do a file save as. I find PNGs to be the best for uploading to the web. Save it as a PNG. We'll just save that to our desktop for now. Save. Uh, do an interlaced or none. Not interlaced. Do none. Okay, it's going to take a second to export that. And we'll switch desktop spaces. And here it is. Our PNG that we just made in 20 minutes. I'm so sorry that video was that long. Okay, with all of that said, I need to go get a drink because I can't feel my lips anymore. My website's techinform.us. My Twitter is twitter.com slash James R. Schultz. And Tuesday nights, as we will be tomorrow, we're live from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time on ustream.tv slash user slash techinformus. We'll be talking about Photoshop, technology, the holidays. Happy holidays. But we'll be back tomorrow. If you, if you actually stayed this long in the video, leave me a comment. Uh, I'll go subscribe to you right now. Thanks, guys. Talk to you uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye.